Hi, my name is John Slack. I'm a graduate student at Vanderbilt University here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here to tell you a little bit about my research. This is hydrogen. And this is oxygen. Under the right conditions, these two molecules will react to form water. This reaction is very exothermic, meaning it gives off energy. Some of this energy can be utilized as electrical energy through a device called a fuel cell. Let me show you how it works. This is the heart of a fuel cell. It's made of a membrane sandwiched between two electrodes. Because of that, it's called a membrane electrode assembly, or an MEA. Hydrogen on one side of the MEA and air on the other side of the MEA flow across the anode and the cathode, respectively. The hydrogen and the oxygen in the air really want to combine to form water. This driving force is called chemical potential. A fuel cell splits apart the hydrogen into electrons and protons. The protons go through the membrane, the electrons go around, and they all recombine with oxygen to form water. When the fuel cell catalyst forms free electrons that want to move toward the cathode, what I called chemical potential now can be thought of as electrical potential. Here is the maximum theoretical potential, or voltage. As electrons are allowed to flow, voltage decreases. This occurs for three main reasons. Activation losses, ohmic losses, and concentration losses. My research is based on minimizing these losses. That way, I generate the most power. The way I do this is by utilizing a technique called electrospinning. Electrospinning involves subjecting a droplet of polymer solution to a strong electric field. This field overcomes the surface tension of the droplet to form nanofiber. Over a period of time, these nanofibers collect to form a 3D structured mat, which I can use as a fuel cell electrode. With high inter and intra fiber porosity, there's a significant increase in the active catalyst surface area. Also, oxygen can more easily access the catalyst sites and water can be more easily removed. Imagine the day when we will be able to pour water into a solar water splitter, fuel our cars, and drive away with the only byproduct being water, completing the cycle for a truly sustainable, portable power source.